everyone and good morning or afternoon i guess <laughs> and welcome to class uh i would like to thank student haru for the raid sudden raid <laughs> thank you so much for coming to class everyone um i hope that you enjoy class today uh taught by me a student who probably shouldn't be teaching <laughs> but hello everyone wait let me put on quiet music <laughs> Is that, is that okay? Is the music volume okay? By the way, this song is by the famous composer, Ryokami Haru. He is an amazing musician and, um, you know, this is one of his great works. <laughs> <clears throat> is that Lucy Hime, the legendary VTuber? <laughs> no, this is Lucy Hime, the person who's going to, um, you have to use the bathroom seven times from nerves. <laughs> Teach you give too much homework. I'll give you how much homework you need. Okay, doot doot. All right. <laughs> and thank you, Raven. Okay. So, uh, today for class, we're going to learn about Live 2D. Yay! Clap, 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 clap. <clears throat> I am uh, not an expert. I've, I just learned how to use it recently. But I figured that um, maybe some people would benefit from uh, learning, hearing what I have to say, I guess. <laughs> so class in session. Let us go to the lesson. I just learned how to use scenes. So that's me as a streamer. There we go. <laughs> Uh, I tried to change the layout a little so you can see the chat more. I right, time to learn. <laughs> Thank you for coming, student Citruus. Citruus. There was part of race with the teacher. Hey! Hey, dude, dude! Do you want detention? Huh? Is that what you want? You'll have to see the principal. <laughs> Who is my other, other uh, V2 persona? <laughs> wow, transitions. Right? Right? Scenes are so cool. <laughs> Lucy, you're a pro. No. <laughs> Not at all. I just learned how to use it today. <laughs> it was Alfie. Alfie Nyan is the principal. I'm already learning already. <laughs> right? Scenes are so cool. I was wondering how other people did them. But before we start the proper... Mm -mm. Oh no, why isn't my presentation here? Oh, because it's power trying to open. Okay. <laughs> so, here is a short uh, presentation to explain what we're doing today. Oh, and there's my dog. My dog wants to join in too. He's... The expert, the foremost expert on live 2D in this house. <laughs> okay, so here is my disclaimer. First, I am self-taught. So um, do take everything I say with a grain of salt, as I put in my disclaimer on the top. Uh, this is how I rig, um, which is not necessarily the most proper techniques, since I learned it from uh, a bunch of tutorials and um videos that i found on youtube in english and in japanese and some of them were silent <laughs> so i guess neither language um i am going to give credit where credit is due a lot of the stuff that i learned i learned from mm, 3.5 new source new sources separate sources so a lot of this is from uh kira omori omori who is a vtuber a peach vtuber on YouTube. I think that if anybody's looked up anything about Live 2D, you'll have come across her videos, which are um, pretty good. They're really uh, helpful, I think. Um, but but there is some other knowledge I also learned from Deep Blizzard, who is another YouTuber on, or VTuber on YouTube, who is Japanese. So his videos do have subtitles, but they seem kind of machine translated. So it would be best to, to check out Deep Blizzard's tutorials after you become a little more familiar with the program. Or if you have um, uh, some understanding of the Japanese language, it really helps. But I, I honestly think Deep, Deep Blizzard's tutorials are really helpful if you can understand them. Uh, I also learned from, of course, the, the Grand Master themselves, Brian Tsui, but from his really old tutorials. So this was one he was still using. I think he was using like Live 2D 2.0 or something. It was really old. I'm already learning. Feels good, man. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. But yeah, Brian Slee actually has some really old tutorials for Live 2D where I did learn some like nice shortcuts and stuff. But I will give you a warning. If you try to look at Brian Slee's old tutorials, 
a lot of it will not be applicable to the uh, current live 2D version. You'll be looking, you'll like, you'll be looking for buttons and you'll be looking for shortcuts and things that just don't exist anymore or look very different in the current version. So I would put an asterisk beside uh, Brian Say. That's high. Hi, Lulu! <laughs> Brian Sensei. <laughs> Master Brian, yes. <laughs> the Grandmaster themselves. And finally, I also learned from the official Live 2D tutorials. So they have, um, they have two kinds of tutorials. They have written tutorials on their website, which have images and instructions. But um, they're not super clear I, because I think some of the tutorial steps are machine translated. <laughs> and they also have video tutorials. But the video tutorials, there's two things. So one, it is using the Japanese version of Live 2D. And two, I, I think it's, I think it is all in Japanese, like even the subtitles. So again, they're helpful, but there's no, there's not really like really guidance on the official Live 2D tutorial videos. So I would refer to Kira Omori and Deep Blizzard, if you can understand Japanese, the most, if you want to uh, look at these other sources. I'll link them in my original tweet on my Twitter, referring to this tutorial, since, I, since they're very helpful and it, it never hurts to have more sources to learn. <laughs> So, me. Why am I doing this tutorial? I'm not an expert, but I've rigged a few um, models of my own in, for myself, mostly. They're, they're half-body uh, models, so they're not a full body, but I think for most VTubers, just having the half-body is really uh, all you need. Um, like, confession. <laughs> Let me see if this is going to mess everything up. If you look at myself, um, I actually have no, I have no feet. <laughs> I don't have any feet. So, um, that's just the thing about me. And also, you probably don't actually need feet unless you're doing uh, specific stuff. Scandalous. Oh god, what happened to your feet? Reveal. <laughs> I, you know, right? My big scandal. Listen, I lost, I lost them. Yes, war is hell. I lost them in, in the great war of hell. You know, the one that you all know. <laughs> so. Let us talk about Live 2D Cubism. Live 2, so what is Live 2D Cubism? Live 2D Cubism, for all intents and purposes, it is a animation program. Um, so it is a, I think the specific name is actually Skeletal Animation Tool. So the difference between this and say traditional animation would be that in Skeletal Animation, you're assigning, you're creating a, a skeleton or assigning the skeleton to specific body parts. So all the body parts will be separated. They're flat 2D images, generally speaking. I guess you could do a 3D images too, possibly, but you assign a skeleton so you can tell these images how to move. So uh, there, it's actually a very popular gaming tech, uh, technique with a lot of games now. So uh, if you know Odin Sphere, kind of an old game now, I guess, but all of this is skeletal animation. You can see her dress is moving. That's just a 2D image. Isn't that wild? You two are representing the old disabled community, so maybe <laughs> I'm not. That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> but yeah, so this is all similar programs. So similar programs to Live 2D, you, you know, a skeletal animation program would be like Spine or Toon Boom. You probably heard those. So let's move on. What can Live 2D do? do? So Live 2D, um, how do I put this? So you're basically creating articulation points, points in your 2D image and telling them how to move in Live 2D. Live 2D is not a face tracking program. Um, it, it, you're, you're essentially just creating the model and telling it how to move in Live 2D. You can create animations in Live 2D, but it's not really uh, what we VTubers need to, needed to use it for. So that's why, um, yeah, we'll just go over how to create a model, I guess. Um, also, it's very important to be aware that um, for most VTubers, uh, you only need all of the, I'm sorry, my dog <laughs> really wants to contribute. For most VTubers, uh, you'll be using a face tracking program, which means that all, um, doggy, sub dork, hi Naito, hi dork, uh, for most VTubers, you'll be using a face tracking program because they're free or cheap and they use your, so they, that means that everything will come from your head. So technically when I move my head like this, um, and you can see my body turning slightly, that's not the program tracking my body. 
get down, you do my water for that is that's an icky mochi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Minji. Yes, everyone say hello to Naito. Uh so unless so most VTubers, unless you are going all out and doing a motion like a full body motion capture, um you're just going to be animating things in relation to the head. So all movements will be in relation to the head. Uh, I also don't know how to do a full body um, rigging because <laughs> that's not something I need. But this is very, very basic rain for today. Uh, yeah. All right, moving on. So what do you need to do your uh, rigging? You first, the first thing you need is you need a PSD with your merged and separated files. So a PSD is a Photoshop document, you know, usually used in Photoshop. Um, and you, your merged and separated files. So that means in cases where you have line art or the color or shading or anything that, like that for like the arm, that all has to be merged down. But make sure your body parts are separated. I'll get into this a bit more in a bit. You need live 2d cubism pro um or the pro trial which is 42 days um i, I cannot emphasize this enough uh you need the pro version <laughs> like i suffered with the free version for a few days and it's just not the same because with uh the free version there's a lot of options that aren't available to you so you could theoretically make a really simple vtuber like they would have very simple movements with the free version but you would have so many limitations. Uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't, it wouldn't look naturalistic, is what I'm saying. What a pro, <laughs> Shush, not a pro. And the pro trial, 42 days may not seem like a lot, but it's actually very long. Like I managed to rig all three of my models, like my funzy, my funzy models, in that time period. So if you, if you're, if you dedicate yourself, you can uh, rig a lot in that time. <laughs> And finally, you need a face tracking program. So some popular options include VTube Studio, uh, which for the time being, it's only available for iPhone and Android, though I have heard the Android version suffers from problems. They recently announced that they're releasing VTube Studio to Steam, uh, but we'll see when that comes. I'm personally really excited because I've heard good things. Um, and my, though I have heard, if you use VTube Studio, that it might burn through your phone a little bit. Do you recommend getting the hang of the software with the free version before going in with the pro trial? Mm, I think that they're almost completely different ball games, I guess I would say. The, the free version is missing so many things from the pro version that you, like the basic features are still there, but it's not, the functionality is not the same. I would definitely, I would just go with the pro trial and figure it out because, um, Especially if you have any kind of background with using Photoshop or any art programs, there is some there are is some degree of skill that transfers over or understanding of the program. Uh, getting sensing instructions were unclear. What's unclear? I'm not 2D RL. <laughs> Isn't that the goal? I want to be 2D. I don't want to be 3D. But yeah, I think that learning the basics for live 2D is pretty easy. It's just that a lot of the work is tedious and it takes time. Um, so I think you can just head straight into the pro trial. And for your purposes, unless you're planning to get good enough to take on commissions in the future, or you know, rig like a million models, the, the pro trial is long enough for you. I also don't know if they let you just download the free version straight up. They might, um, but I think you're fine to just go straight to the trial. Yee, the next Brian Tsui. Shush, <laughs> that's you. You're gonna be the next Brian Tsui. Um, okay, so my next slide. I just wanted to get into some time estimates. So these are my personal time estimates. This may not be the time estimate for other riggers, other artists, or anything like that. But it's just how my workflow works for the last two, three models. So the model art itself will take, for me, takes at least you know around 30 to 40 hours minimum. And this is only for a half body up. Like, if you're going for a full body and planning to rig the entire thing, you, there, you, you can add a lot more time onto this. Um, and my rigging time also ends up around the same. And for me, this is a minimum though, because for other people, 
um, they might want to add more features. So my model doesn't have custom expressions. So you know sometimes when you see a YouTuber and they might click a button and you can see their face go from happy to like sad, or they might get really angry, or they might start blushing. Those are custom expressions that you can animate. Drawing model is my biggest hurdle right now. Yeah, the model takes a long time. <laughs> it takes a long time and you have to be really careful careful because you could just draw your model straight up, but then you'll, without like paying attention to the layers and the colors and uh, whatever, but it would be more annoying. So, so while you're drawing the model and creating your layers, uh, actually separating all your line art and art as you go through is a lot more friendly to you later <laughs> and helpful. But yeah, um, so so th this rigging time again, 30 to 40 hours minimum, is for very basic rigging. No custom expressions and no custom animations. So sometimes you might see uh, VTubers who, uh, for example, I've seen a VTuber where they click a button and their arm comes up and waves and goes back down. This is not body tracking in this case. This is a custom animation. Separate beforehand is good too. Yeah, yeah, so much faster. Um, but yeah, the, the arm moving up and waving and going back down is a set animation, which you can also, I'm pretty sure, set in certain programs. Uh, this is something I forgot to mention, but uh, every face tracking program has different capabilities in terms of if they allow you to have custom expressions or if they allow you to have custom uh, hotkeys. Uh, Situs. I'm struggling a lot with the layering, so I'm not actually sure what pieces I do need. I, I'll, uh, yeah, it can be hard to understand what you need at first. Um, I, I personally haven't looked up a lot of tutorials for it, but I will show you guys how my model is broken down in a second. Uh, yeah, so this is a time estimate. This is also <laughs> part of the disclaimer that we might not get through everything today because my usual breaking time is like 40 hours straight. Um, but I'll try to get as much through as much as we can today. Um, and if you have any questions along the way, feel free to just ask them at any time. Because I think it is a lot to take in at once. So if you're ready, let's go. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, Citrus. <laughs> I hope I say, I'm saying your name right, Citrus. <laughs> but yeah, let's go. I hope that you're all with me so far. <laughs> I'm going to go show you my uh, file now. My art file. Now you lost me. <laughs> I always lose you. <clears throat> so yeah, I just thought I would show you guys my art file and how I separated all the pieces so you can uh, at least see how, I, see how I do it. There are uh, several videos on YouTube already about how to cut your um, cut your model for rigging. Uh, so I think that if you want to refer to those, that's helpful. I think there's one, what's her name? The VTuber Yueko. I think she has a video about how to cut your uh, VTuber. Okay, so let me just show you my model. Okay. So, this is my model. It's kind of meta, I guess. <laughs> but there's two part notes, I think. So one is to make sure that, again, all your pieces are merged correctly. You see creating clones. <laughs> Or I guess three notes. So make sure your pieces are merged correctly. Make sure that your layer order is correct as well. This will save you a lot of trouble later when you import the file into Live2D. Like you can adjust the layer order in Live2D, but it's more tedious. So, and also, oh my God, are these properly named title layers? <laughs> you need to for Live2D. If you don't properly name your layers, you'll, you'll bone yourself in Live2D. Um, so yeah, properly layer them and make sure that you separate each part. So it, you can't really see unless you like zoom in super close, I think. But my, so my horns here, the, the left, the right horn is actually separated from the left horn. <clears throat> you don't need to do this in every single case, but it's just helpful for uh, giving yourself more options later. In particular, if you want these objects to have separate physics, later so animating at different or I, how do I put this animating at different speeds or anything like that then it's super important to separate them so let's go part by part to show you what's separated here and the order of the layers so my devil horns are on top and they've separated separately because they are the topmost layer next we have my bangs the white bangs in the middle here are separated into three layers as well um one mistake that a lot of people make in the beginning 
I've made this mistake too, is that is keeping your hair all in like one layer. So people who have really intense models or really uh, well rigged models have their hair in a lot of separate layers because the more separate animations you have for your hair, the more realistic or more interesting your model will look. So if you look here, my middle bangs are separated. Ooh, look at that, I'm balding. Um, the right bangs are also separated and the left bang they're separated too. And then if you look at my sideburns, uh, I figured these could just be on the same layer since they'll animate the same speed. They're all one layer together. And as you can see, because the bangs are uh, on top of my face, <laughs> the layers of the bangs are on top as well. I don't know if this is super obvious, but that's how it is. Now, next I had my hairpins on top. And they are separated in the left and the right because I figured that my uh, twin tails would have different animation speeds. Then we have my twin tails are separated into two different layers. Um, so there's twin tails on the top. Oh, sorry, LNR inverted, yes, sorry. Brian, <laughs> Brian Sway actually mentioned this in his video, but um, for industry practices, and so if you are thinking about new commercial, uh, commissions or rigging in the future for other people, the left and right refer to the model's left and right, not your left and right. So for example, hairpin R, hairpin right is the right of the model and the hairpin left is the left of the model <clears throat> it doesn't super matter if you're just doing it for your purple purple <laughs> for your personal purposes but it's a, it's important it's a nice habit to get into if you ever do think you're going to do this professionally or for money <laughs> so yeah my twin tails are separate on the top and bottom layers it is one thing i regret I wish I had separated them into their left and right pieces because then I would have had four different physics animations, which would have made it more interesting to look at. But uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know? But yeah, top layer of the twin tails and the bottom layer. And obviously the twin tails are on top because they are on top of my clothes. My ears are also separated. So next is my ears. So the right ear and left ear separated. But they're on top of the back of my hair. So some pieces of your model may be on top of the hair, even though the hair is like, you, you'd think that it's counter, a little counterintuitive, right? But the hair is actually separated as well and layered differently. You can always do it again to hit. <laughs> yeah, there are quite a few, there are a couple of mistakes on this model that I should really fix. You can adjust the PSD once started rigging. So that's actually something interesting. You can adjust the piece, PSD once you start rigging. Uh, in my case, I actually did adjust a few things, but um, I made changes to my model later for the rigging that I um, I decided it would be a hassle to re-import the PSD and redo them. I was lazy, <laughs> is the basics of it. I finished rigging everything and I was like, oh no, I should have done this instead. So be very sure about the things you want to do beforehand, but you can re-import your PSD later after you start rigging. It's just more annoying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Next, let's go to the eyebrows. So you can actually see my eyebrows very well in the model, but you, but if you look closely, yeah, they're there. <laughs> so the model, the eyebrows are also separated in the right and left. After that, we have the eyes. So your eyelashes should be separated as much as possible. I've heard that the more eyelash pieces you have, the more interesting or naturalistic your blinking will look. So let's just zoom in to take a look at this. Uh, also, this is Clip Studio Paint, not Photoshop, because <laughs> Photoshop is too memory intensive for my computer. But here we go. So for eyelashes R, you can see that I've separated, oh, nope, you can't see it because I'm blocking it, okay. I've separated it into at least four separate pieces. So you have the largest block, which I also added the um, crease. The crease is also on this layer. Um, you could separate it, but I don't think there's much of a point uh, since the movements will fall together, follow together with the eyelash anyway. And also another thing, I don't know if you can tell, I click on this. Um, wait, is it? Yeah. Um, on this layer, there's also actually shading. The shading for the crease is also on this layer. So 
So it just makes it easier for when you're animating the blinking later. <clears throat> so that's that part. Um, and then you can see there's a side piece here. And a the ends of the eyelash here. And the bottom lashes. So there's four separate pieces for the eyelashes. Uh, you can contrast it here with this eye, I guess. Which I will slowly make disappear too. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, the eyelashes, I don't know if this is obvious, but the eyelashes, I blah blah. The eyelashes should sit atop of the rest of the eye, since when you animate the eye closing, um, the eyelash, everything will be hidden under the eyelashes in the animation. So after the eyelashes, you have the irises. So there's the right iris, left iris. In my case, so you have different animation techniques and different decisions. Some people separate the, Lucy, you're doing so good. <laughs> Thank you, dude, dude. Best teacher? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, but in my case, I just keep the highlight. Hi, Lucy P. Thank you for the hi, Lucy P, Xion. <laughs> in my case, I keep the highlight of the eye of the iris on the same layer. I submerge them, but that's because my uh, blinking animations are really simple. I've seen other people who do blinking animations where they actually manipulate the shape of the iris and the shape of the highlight as the eye blinks, um, which is very complicated. I'm sure it looks better too, but I don't need that for my purposes. So again, this is very basic rigging. Uh, so if you want to separate the highlight from the iris, you can. I just merged it. So there's that one and that one. And underneath that are the eye whites. Again, separated by right and left. You'll, you, you might be wondering, um, or maybe not wondering, but on all the layers that I've talked about in the merge, they're all shaded. You include the shading in the image. Um, since your model can't really read like lighting, right? Since it's a very basic 2D image. So it doesn't matter. So you can just keep it with static lighting. And it doesn't matter. So the, there, the eyes are gone. So this is what we have hidden so far. Oh well. Next up we have the nose. So in the nose, in the case of the nose, it is just the note, the, the nose like dot, the liner, and the shading. You don't have you don't have the color of the, the skin underneath or anything. It's literally just this dot and the shading. Pretty simple. Uh, next we have the mouth. The mouth is a little complicated. So I will explain this a bit later, but Mm. The mouth basically comes in three or four parts, depending on your own preference. So uh, it's separated between the mouth close. For me, personally, there are a few different ways to do the mouth. This is the way I do the mouth. So the way that I do the mouth requires three to four parts. Um, you have the mouth closed top. So you see this line is the mouth closed, right? So to actually cover the mouth, you have the, the top hat, the top lips, and the bottom lips. Can you separate shading too? Would that work? For the nose or for the mouth or for, for in general with everything? Also, do you guys want lo-fi instead or do you like, or is this music okay? <clears throat> depends on how much work you want to do in general uh yeah it depends on how much work you want to do so you could separate the shading um and have it change depending on the light out in the light so the shadows move with you music is fine okay cool like here for hair for example so you could separate the shading uh for all the body parts you absolutely could it would just be um more tedious and annoying it, it, again, everything is up to your own personal preference. You could theoretically separate it under, under the hair on the skin. <laughs> you could, you could. It's just more tedious, basically. You'll have a lot more layers in Live 2D to deal with, and you'll have to create a lot more movements. And in that case, if you do want to keep the shading separate and have it move uh, based on the movement of the model, you definitely need the pro version, I think. Because the, the free version limits you on the amount of... Uh, 
how do I put this? Manipulations an object can have. Okay. Uh, yeah, so sorry, I was talking about the mouth. So in my case, the mouth is separated into the upper lip. See the upper lip? And the bottom lip. So this is if the up only the upper lip is gone. This is if the bottom lip is gone. Oh, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you get rid of both the upper lip and the bottom lip, you have the mouth fully open. So that is the final layer here on the fourth part. I keep the teeth, and if you want, this is optional, uh, you can have a teeth layer. I have it just because I have the pointy teeth. Okay, doggy. Lucy's just sponsored into selling us the privilege. <laughs> no, I'm sponsored into telling you guys, use it for tw uh, 42 days. I'm just gonna, let me get that dog real quick, real quick. Be right back. Oh my gosh, what are you guys talking about? I tune in and you're shilling for the pro version already. So much hate, Lucy. <laughs> Listen, I lived with the hell version that was free for a few, free version for a few days, and I couldn't live. I just couldn't. <laughs> dog cam. <laughs> I should, I should make a little avatar for my dog, my uh, Cerberus. Pro is not the same software. It will change your life and bring wealth and prosperity. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Pro version, it will uh, revitalize your skin, it will clean your pores, it will bring the death back from life. Yep, death from life, not life from death. Um, and it will change your life. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'll say hello, Andreas. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so where was I? <laughs> we are talking about the mouth. So yeah, I have the teeth you teeth seeds as a separate layer because they're pointy and cute but you don't really need the teeth they're just kind of nice and if you want a more co complicated uh mouth forms later the teeth seeds really help to define your um vowels and consonants and then you have the soles and the fangs mine is at least <laughs> and then you have mouth open so to review the mouth is in four layers you have mouth open teeth seeds bottom lip top lip. Thanks are major more point. I think so too, right? They're super cute. Okay. Oof, I'm gonna sneeze. Hold on. I didn't sneeze. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and the blush is also a separate point. A separate layer. Uh, I don't really think you need to separate the blush into two layers since it's not like they're gonna have really like complicated independent movements so having the blush on one layer is fine perfect and then we have the face layer so this is basically just just the head the face head yep <laughs> which uh in my version includes all the shading again so yeah get rid of that uh, I put everything on the, yes, yeah, so all my face layers I put on the top. And the body, I tend to keep at the very bottom because I don't want anything clipping through. Uh, in my case, <clears throat> sorry about that, guys. Ugh, I need water. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the neck layer is next. The neck should be separate, round. <laughs> it is round. <clears throat> So the neck layer is separated from the rest of the body because the neck itself will have uh, some complicated independent movements later. Egg. <laughs> I'm an egg tuber. Yeah, my head's just an egg. So separate the white neck from the rest of the body. <coughs> oh, Doggy is excited again.
Uh, so yeah, next I braid, and then after that, I have the back of the hair. Uh, the back of the hair goes near the bottom because it needs to be behind the neck. So yeah, there's the back of the hair. I also want to point out a mistake and caution you that if you do have anything like egg, <laughs> he really said that. <laughs> I want to caution you that if you have any object like a hat like this, you make sure that you fill out fill it out as if it was like going to be seen. Every object, even if it is going to be covered by something else, should be fully drawn because um, when your head turns certain ways, it will be revealed. So in my case, I messed this up. So technically this should be the red rim of the beret, but if I look down, so if I look down, you can see uh, the pink peeking out. So that's a mistake I made. Don't, don't repeat my mistakes. Do better than me. So yeah, the hat is behind everything else. So once we get with that, you can see that we've gotten rid of the entire head. So make sure your layers are separated. Uh, and then the body doesn't matter super as much. Blob pat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or the order of the body doesn't matter. Well, the things that matter in the body are the layer, separating the layers that you require separate uh, physics for. So in my case, this white neck cloth, I separated for because I knew I was going to give it a different uh, physics animation later. So that one I separated. And then you have the chest. So this is more of a case if you have... Um, you have <laughs> if you have a vtuber with a female body or if they have a rather large chest in general so if you had like big um beef cake in my case um the chest is small anyways it doesn't matter anyways it doesn't matter it doesn't matter big milkers don't say that <laughs> i want boy boy don't say that don't say that <laughs> Okay, so yeah, basically just se separate the chest for um, separate animations later. That's it. <coughs> Big two toes. Oh, my boy, boy. <laughs> uh, this is a pa family friendly chat. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, separate chest. Uh, and then you have the dress. Lucy's boing boings aren't much boing boings. <laughs> In fact, I don't have any boing boings now that I've disappeared them. That's actually my next model update, is I'm getting rid of them entirely. It's just gonna be a cavity. You're giving lewd humane upgrade the stream. No! <laughs> no! No, 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 <clears throat> I am moving on. <clears throat> so here's the dress. <laughs> I kept it all one layer because um, I knew that I was only gonna be, see be seen from the waist up. But if you do decide later on that you want to give yourself options and you want to do full body animation, I would separate the waist and the skirt. This is how you undebut. <laughs> it is how you undebut. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to disappear forever. Um, and then the arms, right and left. So I want to also emphasize, in my case, I merged them all as one layer because I knew that I didn't want to give it a lot of... Um, a lot of physics so the arm right and arm left are just separate but in your case if you have like flowing sleeves or if you have complicated um complicated clothing that you do want to give really interesting animation then i would separate them from the arms so yeah right arm left arm again you're announcing your debut with the stream that's slowly disappearing <laughs> that's one slow fan of snap <laughs> yes Please look forward to my end debut. <laughs> oh, and then I have a cape. My cape actually has slight physics movements, so that's why I separated it. And at the very back of everything are the wings. Uh, again, right and left. Uh, goodbye, forever. I must go home to my people. So that is my file. My art file. Shall we switch over to... Glad to be. I die now, thank you. I die, I die now, thank you forever. Uh, <laughs> let's go back to the live TD with a cool transition. Woo! Someone's for Lucy's return. Was there a kid you sent to hell when you transferred to Earth? <laughs> what? What? Who would do that? 
I do realize that your braids are a bit stiff. Shouldn't they, should they be segmented in order to swoof, swoof swiftly? Ah, <clears throat> uh, yes. If I had separated each of my large strands, especially since my, since my hair isn't, like, really finely stranded, it would look, the movement would look more, a lot more uh, naturalistic and interesting to look at. So, yeah. But I, I knew that I didn't want to suffer and create 7 million different layers. <laughs> but I do, I do encourage you, if you want your model to have more complicated hair movements, to separate them as much as possible. Uh, teach? I can't stay for the whole class. I got a uh, dentist appointment. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is a real one or if you're making a joke, but... <laughs> Thank you for coming. If you're drop if you're leaving, doot doot. Thanks for dropping by. <clears throat> I'll for sure check the bottom. Oh yes, thank you so much. <laughs> and thanks for dropping by. And I enjoyed your, your I, I always enjoy you being here, dude dude. Always a welcoming uh presence. I hope you gave us your permission slip though, from the your parent. Okay, let's turn on live today. So once you have your entire um PSD figured out, all your layers merged and cropped properly and ordered properly. You can turn on Live 2D. So this is what it looks like blank. Um, it'll show you some annoying pop-ups talking about offline storage and like a contest or something, but you can just close those. Next you click File, uh, Open. So now we're importing our PSD. So File, Import, Hi, Missy. Hi, Evany. Thanks for coming by. We're finally touching Live 2D. <laughs> oh, no, this is the wrong file. Don't look at that one. That was nothing. Lucy Alter. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. He saw nothing. <clears throat> No, you didn't see anything. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Um, so you press file open and it'll import your Photoshop file into a model file. If that makes sense. So here it is. Let me look at my notes real quick. Um, okay. So I mentioned it earlier, but if you mess up anything in your Photoshop file and you want to fix it later, um, if you save this project and re-import the same PSD with your altered layers or uh, new layers, it will actually read the same uh, PSD. It won't, it won't import anything that it had already. Now, uh, take this with a grain of salt because when I first did it, it worked for me, but after a while, um, it wouldn't reread the altered layers. So I just duplicated those layers and altered them and then just replace the original layer in Live 2D. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically you can make alterations. Oh, Pog. Yep, yep, it's really cool that way. And that's only with the pro version. No, it's a joke. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I'm Pog, not joking. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's probably in both versions. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what we have here. So let's explain, there's a lot of buttons and a lot of things on the screen, but you won't really need most of them. Uh, let me explain. So the parts on the left here, these are your literal parts, obviously, all your separated layers. There is a, so remember I told you that it's important to layer your uh, layers properly in Photoshop? So, but there's a way to fix it later. So say that I didn't put my devil form or my, uh, in the right order. Say he was underneath everything for some reason. Let's put it underneath the, uh, uh, no wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> Let's put it underneath my, um, oh, sorry. Let's put it underneath. <laughs> uh, 
Did I do it right yet? Where's the back of her hair? Okay, so let's put it underneath the back of her hair. Wait, why is it? What is this? Okay. Whatever. So if you can see now, it's underneath the back of the hair, which is not where I want it to be. So, theoretically, okay, thank you. So theoretically, I could change the order. I could drag it physically, yes. I could also change this number here. So this number is the draw order or the appearance order. So if I do, I think higher, lower numbers appear higher, I think. So if I do 100, nope, just kidding. That was a lie. Um, <laughs> higher numbers appear higher. So everything is default set to 500. But if I do 510, it'll appear above everything else because the uh, draw order is the highest. Um, I'm just going to undo all that. So uh, that is where you can fix it. Also, there are some uh, keystrokes from Photoshop and other drawing programs that you can translate over here. So one of them is obviously is obviously Control Z. Another is that if you press the space bar, your icon will turn your cursor will turn into a hand, and you can drag the image from left to right without infecting it, affecting anything. You can just move it around. Uh, also, if you want to zoom in and out on the image, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. If your mouse doesn't have a scroll wheel, then there are a bunch of tools on the bottom of this area, which will help you um, zoom and adjust your view. So let's go over the zoom tools real quick. On the bottom left, what's this? Oh, you can change the background color. So I don't know why you'd want to, but you can <laughs> if you want to make things stand out more. I just imagined having no scroll wheel. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you would do. Do they make mouse with mice with no scroll wheel now? If your mouse doesn't have a scroll wheel, what are you doing? Stop using a trackpad. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know people's situations. But in any case, um, yeah, that's with the scroll wheel. So this is the background color. Here, you can, what if my mouse doesn't have buttons? If your mouse doesn't have buttons, then you might be shit out of luck for uh, doing stuff on live 2d like left click and right click it's all your mac <laughs> okay so this percentile um it has a drag a drag kind of icon so you can drag it closer or smaller or you can manually input the number i think but this is a manual uh zoom in and out so if you drag it in closer obviously you'll zoom in closer if you drag it out farther it'll drag out farther and then you have here which is the visual representation of that so you can also zoom in and out that way but with higher degree it's also just a giant scroll wheel, just a trackball. <laughs> Technology's gone too far. Uh, here, you can also change the display. So the one colon one means that you can see the original uh, file size. So if you want to see one one pixel how large your actual image is, you can click on it. So mine is kind of large, not super large, um, but you know, whatever. I actually don't know if there's a recommended size for how large you make your model. I made it um, as big as I need it for my purposes. But I would recommend to make it, you know, bigger than your, however big you're going to see it on your screen. Just so that the quality will be preserved. Uh, this, it will display all of your image. The, the, uh, the icon with the arrows on the corners. So if you click on that, you can see your whole beautiful self again. And beside that, you can click focus on selected element. So if I click on, say, the uh, devil horn and I click on this, then it will, and I click on, sorry, this is the box with the cross between it, it will focus on only that object. I'm just saying that my model is 12,403 pixels by 17,440 pixels. That's a big model, Andreas. It's a big boy. Um, and the tool beside that is a reflect tool, like the two arrows with the dot, dot, dot. If you click on that, you can flip your model left to right. Oh, sorry, this is one quick note when you're drawing your model. So I would use a, um, I would use, this is mostly for artists. Uh, you, I would use the symmetry tool when I'm drawing and uh, for most of it, because you want it to look symmetrical. But um, I would make sure that not everything is symmetrical because you will get an uncanny valley feeling. 
uh, where everything looks too perfect. So I would add in some asymmetrical features. So when you're doing the bangs, for, exa for example, that that's an easy, asymm or hair in general, that's an easy asymmetrical element to add so it doesn't look like a mirror person. Oof, mine is like 2K by 3. Computer already struggling with Photoshop. Oh, yeah, it's hard. Live 2D is a big boy program. Uh, it takes a lot of memory. Oh, also, this is a quick note. But after working on Live 2D for a few hours, it sort of, it will slow down because I think it keeps a rather long, exhaustive memory of everything that you've done. Like, it lets you control Z pretty far. So what I do after working on Live 2D for like an hour or two hours is I control save it and I close it and I restart the entire program because it will you will notice that it will start to lag. Rip potatoes. Rip indeed. <clears throat> uh, where was I? Oh, sorry. And then this last I uh, icon here, it says multi-view. This is probably for if you're doing more complicated modeling or animations. Uh, you can click on... Um, if you click on the arrow, it'll show you different preview options for how you want to view it. So if I click on this, for example, it'll show me what I was viewing and then it'll open up three more views that I could adjust. So if I wanted to see how something looks like uh, close up and then see how it looks like when zoomed out, uh, I could have different viewing options. There's like a bunch of them. Um, I don't use this, <laughs> but I'm not a real professional. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. And now we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about parameters here for a second. No, parameters and meshes. So here on your list, you see down in this window that says parameters, you see a bunch of different lines that have a di bunch of different descriptions. So you have angle X, Y, Z, I open, I smile, things like that. <coughs> Sorry about that. Oh, Freya! Oh, oh wow! Freya, thanks so much for the raid! <laughs> hey, Viking raid! Wow, thank you, Freya! <laughs> what were you... What were you playing? How, how was the stream? Oh wow, Flatcap! Thank you so much for the follow! <laughs> thank you! Wow! <laughs> so nice to see everyone here. I was doing some live 2D first and then some Crusader Kings. Oh, cool! Nice! <clears throat> Did you create more babies? More, um, more. Oh, Japanese only. That'll be good for a tutorial. Okay. Ja, <laughs> dake. Ma. Ja, ima dare mo nani ga okoteru no mo karimasen. So desu ne. Hai, yokoso, Reira san. Kyo wa, ano, live 2D no, ano, live 2D o chotto setsume shite imasu. わかりますか。え、上手ですね、ナイトさん。ちょっとあの私のモデルをアバターかな。私のアバターを説明しています。私はあんまり上手じゃないけど、ちょっとあの気になったら見てください。ライブ<笑> あ、パラメータはこんにちは。こんにちはね。あ、パラメータはあの自分で作る。自分で作る。確かあるんですよ。自分で作る。あの、もうセット、もうセットしていない。Okay, that's that was that was a minute, right? <laughs> so the par parameters you create them yourself in the sense that like so so these are the default parameters that they'll give you. And hydrate. Thank you. <clears throat> Talking so much. <laughs> More hydrate. Okay, pee time. Ah, thank you. Okay, no more Japanese. Oh, another one. More pee? Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Lucy P. Oh, so much pee. Okay, I'll, I'll just chug the whole thing. That's why I hydrate need to cool down. <laughs> I'm not a coward. <laughs> you can make me pee. It's fine. <clears throat> Thank you for the hydrates. I will have to use the bathroom in probably 10 minutes. Thank you. 
Don't quote me. I didn't say those words. <laughs> okay, so these are the default parameters that Live2D will give you, or Live2P, I guess. So, so the default ones are angle X, angle Y, angle Z, I, o, I L open, I smile. Smile you won't really use much unless you have a program that can read that. Uh, I R open. So the eyes opening, make sure that when you create la your model and your parameters, you separate them. One time I accidentally created the parameters for the eyes opening and closing all on the eye left. So my model couldn't blink. Or not blink, sorry, the model couldn't wink. <laughs> And a live 2D, uh, a VTuber that can't blink uh, or wink might as well not exist. Uh, and then there's angle X, or sorry, eyeball X and Y, which will be uh, your positioning for your irises, I think. And then your brow, brow left, brow right, brow left, brow right, brow left angle, brow right angle, brow. Oh, new followers no more. <laughs> it is gone. <laughs> You can't make fun of me anymore. I figured out how to get new follower working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so these are the eyebrows, which you can have really complicated movements with. I kind of ignore all of them except for like your basic movements. And then your mouth. So your mouth has two different parameters. So there's mouth open and close if you want to make a really simple mouth animation. And there's mouth form if you want to make like Wow, 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 wow. Complicated mouth forms like that. Uh, both are valid. And there's cheek. I, I'll be honest, don't know what cheek is. Don't know what cheek is. The seam? Visima? Visime? What's that? What's that? What's that? Uh, and then there's body X and Y. Um. X, Y, and Z, sorry. Uh, you can use this when you're doing full body tracking. Uh, I don't think that we will use it, probably. But, yeah, these are for if you're animating the entire body. And finally, it's like, I will... Oh, we I will. Uh, sorry, and there's breathing. Which, uh, the mouth shapes. Oh, interesting. Is anyone starting to feel insane for the music? <laughs> Okay, I'll, ch I'll change the music to lo-fi. Here. The technical term for your home. Ah, oh, Freya is an expert. <laughs> Vsim, Vsim, <laughs> Let me fade the music out and get some lo-fi. Who needs context? What did you clip? What did you clip? <laughs> what did you clip? Spoon, hi Spoon. Hi, Spoon. Thank you for coming. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry the stream today might not be that interesting. <laughs> it's it's mostly about Live 2D and how to use it. Uh, but if you're interested in learning about Live 2D, uh, I hope you enjoy it. It just changed me. <laughs> I'm glad, Freya. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous because I know you've been learning too. <laughs> so you probably know more than me. <laughs> The face your model makes at the end of the clip too. I will see that after and then cry, okay? <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, face good. It's too good not to make. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't like that. I'm scared. <laughs> I will look forward to that at the end. Did you rate your own model, Lucy? I did, yeah. Um, that's why I feel that I, I'm not qualified, but that's why I feel like I'm doing this. Yep, that's it. I'm not qualified, but I'm doing this anyway. <laughs> so that's my explanation for this stream. Uh, I actually paid, I paid for one month of pro because I had to fix some things on my model anyway, so I thought I would share my mistakes with people. I feel like you're more advanced than me. I never really finished one except the peach tuber. But the peach tuber is so good! I don't know, I feel like you've, you've probably, I don't know. <laughs> Lucy, I'm learning a lot. Oh, I'm glad! <laughs> I didn't know how useful this would be to other people because I, I think you could have just learned this from other tutorials, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I wanted to share for my friends. So I thought I heard something. Okay. Uh, where was I? Oh, so there's breathing parameter, uh, which if you watch any VTuber just standing still, standing? Staying still for a second, you'll notice, um, you'll see them breathing. Although, to be honest, the art of the mods I'm working on is really complex. Luna loves them fine details. Yeah. I noticed. 
uh, they they have a lot of shading on all of theirs, like merged with parts, which which also complicates things a little. But I don't know. Yeah, their models are really cool. I think it's so cool that they offer uh, free models for people to practice on. Breathing thing is so neat. Yeah. Let me zoom in on my model so you can see me breathing. So that's me breathing. <laughs> so that way it doesn't look like you're like you're deceased or anything. <laughs> and that's a matter. So breathing is one of the last things you do because that's just uh, selecting basically your entire body and uh, setting the parameters to be in and out. Today I was, I was practicing on our own model. Perks of being friends with an artist, I suppose. Oh, that's awesome. Yay. Well, did that go well? I don't think mine has breathing not go well. <laughs> that's okay. Now you know how to, you will, you'll learn how to do breathing and you can do that if you want under, on your model, Andreas. Breathing is overrated. <laughs> exactly. Who needs to breathe? Just crying. No, fuck breathing. <laughs> fuck breathing. Wow, we've got a lot of anti-breathers here. I die now, thanks. Interesting. A lot of hot takes. Uh, okay. Oh, it's hard. And then the last three parameters that they give you as default is your hair movements. So, uh, hair move front, hair move side, and hair move back. Now, these are the very basic default ones. But I, if, like I said, if you make your uh, hair have a lot more complicated movements, you'll need to create your own uh, parameters for them, separate them, and also for your own clothing physics, for extra physics later. Um, one word of caution, just one big word of caution. Don't delete any of your parameters. Even if you mess up, uh, don't delete it because um, each parameter, because you think, oh, if I mess up hair move back, I'll just delete it and make a new one. When you create a new, par but each parameter has a specific uh, parameter ID, which is why it's so important that you uh, don't delete a default parameter. If you ever make a mistake, there's a button to just get rid of it. Do anime people breathe anyway? <laughs> Good question. I mean, I breathe at least, but I guess, I don't know. Maybe I'm a fake anime. No breathing allowed unless it's through your mouth. <gasps> also, our model has big old titties, so I get to practice boot physics. <laughs> that is one thing. I will say, I do not know how to do boot physics because I... I didn't. No, why is there, why is there another... Why is there, why is there another clip? <laughs> Why are there so many clips for, for my live to do tour? What did I do? Okay, it's fine. <clears throat> it's fine. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you'll have to create your own parameters later for extra physics and stuff. Let me refer to my old sheet. Uh... Only one way for Lucy to learn boof giggles. Stop, I'm not going to. Oh, wait, Lulu says, wait, how is that about not deleting default parameters? Does it also count for deformers? Ah, uh, deformers, I also would be careful about because um, in some cases with deformers and parameters, when you delete them, it will read it as you deleting the entire object. So the original object of like your hair, or your um your ears or whatever if you delete it while it the the deformer uh contains the object it will delete the entire object i think uh so you have to be very careful you want to make sure that whatever you're trying to so deformers are pretty limited but very useful for big shapes yeah they are kind of limited i personally prefer using deformers because it gives me like a, a separation and a backup object, but and more vertices or less vertices, I guess. But um, everyone has their own personal way of doing things again. So yeah, be very careful when you're deleting uh, anything in uh, Live 2D. Sorry, I don't know if, uh, if I answered your question, Lulu, or if I was mumbling or speaking too quickly. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let me just go over the tools on the top. So, so one of your primary tools will be something that is called a deformer. And deformers come in two kinds. So if you can see on my screen here, I know it's kind of tiny, but on in the middle, this these three sets of icons. So there's one with a bunch of dots that are go dot, dot, dot together. And there's one with like a circle and like a, like a really sharp nipple. And 
then there's this the the third icon with two two like circles and sharp nipples. So these are your deformer tools. Um, sharp nipples, yeah. <laughs> so one is called a warp deformer. So a warp deformer. Let me just do one real quick. Um, or them here. Let me show you my finished model, uh, fully rigged, so that way you can understand what I'm talking about. This one. <clears throat> So this has a bunch of stuff, <laughs> but let's look at the horns, for example. So this is a warp deformer. So a warp deformer is basically, a, it, it, it'll let you warp an object that is in it. So in this case, you see there, it, it's bound by two different boxes. There's the green box and the red box. The green box will only manipulate the specific corner or point that you're talking about. So in this case, I can like mess around with this here by clicking and dragging. You click and drag most things in Live 2D. Click and drag um, this point. Control Z. The red box, it, if it manipulates the entire object or objects within this uh, deformer. So when I manipulate the red one, everything gets all messed up. Another point is that in the green, the green box there are <coughs> sorry <laughs> in the green box there are anchor i would call them anchors so you can man manually manipulate a green point right like this or you can use one of these anchor kind of things and manipulate a whole set a whole set of um points oh, thank you for the hydrate <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So there is a whole set of uh, points that you can manipulate with these anchor kind of sticks. Generally speaking, they're usually in the cardinal direction. So north, east, south, west, and one in the, two in the middle. So you can see there's two different ones here. If you click, if you click and drag on this point, uh, it'll affect all of these ones on this side. And you click on drag on this one, all the ones on this side. So that is a warp deformer. A uh, rotation deformer is, or sorry, a rotator or a rotation deformer is a little complicated. Uh, it's something that you will need to use for your head and your neck later. So this is the rotator for the head. So basically um, it works like, it's a rotator. You have this circle and you have this point. So when you drag this point, whatever objects you've assigned to this rotation will turn. I. One point of interest, however, um, I've mentioned before that basically in Live 2D, what you're doing is setting the limitations of how your object can move. <laughs> so in my case, even if I turn my head, Lucy Classic TM, <laughs> thank you. Even if I turn my head all the way down on the ground, my head uh, and my model won't turn all the way down on the ground because when I set it, I said that um, I set the limitations. I said my head can only turn this much. That's where you set it in Live 2D. But if you're manually dragging it like this with the head rotator, this is not how you set it. If you do this and hope that it'll set it this way, it will never happen. You have to set it in parameters. Add Lucy head again, the classic. <laughs> it is the classic, thank you for remembering. Okay, so those are your two kind of deformers. I'll explain the rest of the things at the top. So on the top left, this tool with the little guy in the box, and there's two more boxes. Rip old Lucy pin tweet. <laughs> Rip old Lucy in general. Uh, but yeah, if you click on this box, this is editing your texture atlas. So at the end, when you're done everything uh, rigging, you will have to create like a texture sheet. So it will tell um, whatever program how to read uh, your model, basically. Where's my old Lucy redeem? <laughs> Never. Maybe. Maybe maybe an anniversary date. Maybe. <laughs> Can't wait to say rip old Andreas. Goodbye, old Andreas. Rip. I'm excited to see new Andreas, though. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so this is what the first button does. Uh, texture Atlas is just something for the end. Here, the second button with a triangle and a little fork guy. That is edit mesh manually. Um, 
So mesh is something that we also have to create. Uh, it is basically you creating the skeleton for your uh, 2D model, your 2D image. Because there's no bones right now, right? So we have to create the bones, um, which we will do very soon. Assuming it doesn't take me like five months to get everything done. <laughs> it'll come, it'll come soon, I'm sure. So the third button in this set is the automatic mesh generator. <clears throat> so it generates a mesh of your entire image. It auto reads your image and assigns like uh, mesh points, like a skeleton. So that is actually one of the first things you wanna do uh, when you import your model. So we're gonna do that real quick. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna control A, which means control all, which means selecting everything. I'm sorry, my dog really wants to teach us. Head down a little. I'm learning doggo. Thanks for the tips. The demon isn't helping much. <laughs> I know the dog is the real live CD teacher here. Oh, uh, where was I? So you're gonna press you're gonna press Control A, Control All, and you're gonna hit the Auto Mesh button here. Uh, then a window. Well, you can't see it. I wonder if I should change it to a display view. Hold on a second. Um, maybe I should just let you see my display, which seems maybe like a mistake. Let's see. Sure. Okay. I demand more orbs. <laughs> what do you mean demand more orbs? Uh, let me shrink this down a little. Okay. So let me know if you can see it now. Let's see. When I can, yeah, there you go. Okay, sorry for that. So when you press uh, the auto mesh button, this window will pop up. So it'll ask you, so there's a drop down menu in preset, which you can select a few images or options. So there's standard, there's, which makes you into this Eldritch Abomination. There's deformation little, which will give Alf. Oh, thank you, Alice. <laughs> Thank you for hosting my stream. <laughs> I've never been hosted before. I don't know what this entails, but thank you. Uh, deformation little, which will mean less deformation points. And then deformation heavy, which means that you will become even more of an Eldritch Abomination. Oh God, it's not going. It's going to crash my computer. Goodbye, everyone. Ah, yes, the orbs. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, now I'm a terrifying of Eldritch Abomination. That's what's going on now terrifying <laughs> I tend to I put it on standard deformation because uh, even for the deformation points I use it's usually only a few objects I usually stick to the deformer itself oh yes I've seen the orbs is that your true form you haven't even seen my true form yet um yeah I leave I keep it to standard so once you select your preset you actually don't have to press ok or anything you just select it and then it's good you just close the window Oh wow, you can see everything I have open. Let me just boop, boop, flick that real quick. Yeah, and I usually do the browse mouth and lashes manually anyway. Exactly. Uh, that is actually my the vertices. That's actually the next point. When you when you do auto mesh, it's very smart and it knows how to read a lot of things. But for for small objects with fine points, it will mess them up. So in the case of let's go click on one of the objects that Freya mentioned. Uh, let's go click on the eyebrows. The eyebrows. Oh, let me let me just uh, take off my wig so we can see better. So here, if you look on the eyebrows, it kind of got a little wrong, right? Like you got the basic shape, but you have some really messed up triangles. So in that case, that's when we use some of these other tools that we mentioned earlier up here. Oh. I didn't go through all the tools. I'll explain these tools later. <laughs> so in this case, we go into the mesh and we can use this boy, 
the triangle with the fork, which is to edit the, me the mesh manually. So if we click on this, we go into the editing mode. Uh, you have to make sure that you are in editing mode whenever you try to mess with the mesh because you aren't. So say I'm trying to mess with it normally, right? And I just do this. I'm manually manipulating the object because I'm not in editing mode. So we go to editing mode, again, triangle with a fork, and then uh, we manually adjust the points. It will bring up this sub menu on the top left, which has a bunch of tools you can again use. So there's this arrow, uh, which is just, you know, you can manually drag points like this, right? It's just letting you manually adjust anything. There is a lasso tool. So the lasso tool lets you select a group of points to manipulate. Whoa, I've never used it before. So now I can manipulate this entire group if I want. And then we have the plus and minus forks. The plus fork lets you add more. Let me just, okay, let me just, okay. So now the plus and minus fork lets you add and subtract points. So I click on the plus fork and I click on here, it has added a point. It will also have a blue, a blue line here, which is a suggest, suggested connection point because uh, the entire thing is based off of triangles. And if you have a free floating point, it really won't really affect anything. So it will suggest a point for you to connect to the rest of the mesh like that. If you take the minus fork and you click on this point, it will subtract it. And it'll also get rid of the red lines that were connecting it beforehand. If I click on the minus point on a point that's in the middle of everything, connected by everything, by the way, it will suggest new connection points between the remaining, uh, remaining points. Um, and then we have the eraser tool. So the eraser tool will erase a series. Uh, I wonder if I can, nope, can't. Okay. Will erase. Can I make this small? The eraser tool will rest, oh, will erase uh, points that are within its uh, radius. So if I do this, it erased all of those points. Lucy Sensei, shitsumo ga arimasu. Hi, Haru-kun. Nan desu ka? What is it? What would you like? What would you like for Christmas, little boy? Oh, that pee feeling is coming. Does the mouth stop moving if you are mute for the first? <laughs> this is called harassment. You are harassing the teacher. <laughs> and I will see you for detention after class, Harukun. Okay? Okay? Wakata no? And this last point, going back to the lesson. Gay baby gel, 69 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure to unmute Discord too. <laughs> this is bullying. Who said you could bully the teacher? You're not allowed to bully the teacher, okay? <laughs> I prepared, prepared so many good things today, and y'all are just bullying me. That's rude. Now, do I see you laughing, Minji? Don't laugh. No, we bullied the streamer. <laughs> I am a teacher right now. Hide your, hide your, no, I already have to pee. <laughs> no. So much water. Good job. I drank so much water. I drank so much water. And it's all because of you. It's all because of you guys. I drank so much water. I had to pee. I still have to pee from last time. Fuck you! Fuck you, fuck you! Fuck you! Thanks for the point, redeems of any. 
need to pee. Thanks, Citrus. Thanks, Minji. Thanks, Andreas. <clears throat> I'm all full. I don't have that function. I don't have that function, all right? Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, God, I feel so full. I just pee. Stop. <laughs> Stop stealing my pee. You're not allowed to pee till after class. Stop. <laughs> don't steal my pee. <laughs> I need that. Wait, do I need that? Anyways, let's go back. No ga karate. Karate kareru. Ga deru. Hey, reading pee points. <laughs> What would you do with a pee point? What would you even do with that? <laughs> what do you do with a pee point? <clears throat> I don't even remember what I was doing. Redeem pee. Why do you want the... <laughs> what, do you... what do you want the pee? What do you want with the pee? still your remedy? <laughs> Hi, Remly. I can't believe one of the first things you've ever said in one of the first streams you've ever attended is pee stealing. <laughs> Why are you pee? Why are you stealing my pee? Okay, <clears throat> I am going to try to remember what I was teaching. Why? <laughs> you know why. Add points. Drag to add a vertex. I don't even know what this does. Oh, I oh, it adds a bunch of... Okay, so this tool... <laughs> when you click on this tool, <laughs> and you click around these points, it adds a bunch of vertexes. Isn't that so cool? What is a question mark, question mark, question mark? <laughs> I'm being bullied in my own stream, my own teaching stream. <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe this. This tool creates vertice vertices if you, if you drag it across, okay? Okay? And then you drag this. <clears throat> the point, the point, <clears throat> the point of the mesh is you want to make workable triangles so that you can, um, uh, you can, um, you can change them later. I, I have to pee. <laughs> My face when discover, teacher discovers tools dress class. <laughs> If you've never had a class where the teacher learned something while you were ta having the class, then you didn't have a real teacher. P high school P. I can't. I can't go P. I just got new more viewers. <laughs> more viewers just showed up as I said I have to pee. <laughs> okay, I'll pee in a minute. Okay. Uh, so you want to adjust this? <laughs> want to adjust this? Japanese only. So <laughs> I don't have any more points. Japanese only. Okay. What is this? Alphiature 3. Wow. Arifi nan. Aris chan. Chia arigato. Demo. Watashi wa mada. Oshiko shimasen. Shimasen desi yo. Atashi wa mada. Koreo. Skuta iru kara. P arigato. P wa. Arigato jana. Arigata kunai. Wow, nice tutorial. Good thing I totally speak Japanese. Yakatane? Yakatane, Citrus Jan, Kun, Jan, Citrus San. Yakatane. Koreo tsukute. Kono, Kono pointo, Ugoite. I'm sure people would rather pee cam over dog. You can't say that. That's not Twitch terms of service. Okay, on that note, I feel dirty typing. Yeah, yeah, you are dirty typing that. I am going to take a quick, quick pee break. Quick pee break, okay? <laughs> I will be back. Please enjoy this lo-fi music as I pee. No pee break. No, I have to pee. <laughs> I don't care. I'm the teacher and I'm going to go pee. <laughs> I'm going to pee and I'll be back with more water. <laughs> Please enjoy this lo-fi music. <laughs> Be right back.
I'm back. <laughs> I peed, I came, I conquered. Are you proud of me? Are you proud of me that I peed? Hey chat, will you tell me you're proud of me for peeing? Freya says, Nihongo wa karimasen, doushio kana? No pee break, don't don't forget to unmute. I I unmuted! <laughs> I unmuted, you can't bully me. 10 out of 10 live to the tutorial. Proud of you. Thank you, Freya. No, you're not proud of me of any. <sighs> I wanted to make a nice live to tutorial. You all wanted me to drink water and pee. So that's what you got. Pee <laughs> shimashita <laughs> Sensei, kikoenai, uso da yo, uso. Uso da yo. Uso de sho. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, English. English. You're muted. I am not muted. <laughs> Haru, you have double detention. Damn. Okay. So. <laughs> we're in the mesh. We're editing it. So. What I like to do is think of it like a polygon. Like, or not polygon. Like, like, a, like, a, like. A 3D object. Is she talking? I'm gonna pay attention. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> I'm gonna pay attention. <clears throat> All of you, Andres, you have detention too. You also have detention. So anyway, I like to basically put the points like a object around the object. So it's almost like your the objects have three points. Has these points. Anyway. And I like to make sure they're they're even. Yeah, same. I hear the tune, so it's not me. Andres, I can't hear you either. So you're okay. I can't stand any of you. <clears throat> so I make sure that they're even. Basically, you want them. I don't know if this is right. This is just how I do it. You kind of want them to have a normal, like a like an even distribution of triangle points. You want there to be a frame outside of the mesh, because those that's how you're gonna manipulate it. But you also want them to be kind of following the object here. This is my personal preference. I don't know if this is right, but I don't like how this specific vertice has three different points relying on it. This is just my personal preference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redo this so that e, uh, this point will be connected to this point. And then I'm going to adjust it a little bit here. And this point, there's no point here that would help me adjust this corner of the mesh. So I'm going to adjust that again manually uh, by adding a new vertice here. Uh, there's also, sorry, there's another button here called auto connect. If you click on auto connect. Oh, major. <laughs> oh my gosh, major, hi. Wow, thank you so much for the for the raid, Major. Wow. <laughs> thank you, Major. Uh, what were you playing? How was your stream? Welcome, Raiders. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. More people to redeem hydrate redeems. No, no more hydrate redeems. <laughs> oh, there's a range does not mute for it. <laughs> how was the how was the stream, Major? What were you playing? Was it was it Rogue Company? <laughs> and hello, Raiders. Uh, we're play we're doing Live 2D today. Uh, which is the program that a lot of 2D VTubers use to make their avatar- or to make their avatars move. I was playing Raft and we- I almost died. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Raft looks really hard. I was watching Andreas play it actually and it looks really hard. Uh, I was surprised that there were parts of Raft where you don't- where you aren't on a raft where you go to an island. That was a surprise for me. Um... Is it still in early access or is it fully released now? 
Okay, I will drink water for you, Andreas. <clears throat> But yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name's Lucy, and I play a lot of- I play games- I play a lot of different kind of games, a lot of indie games, and I do art streams sometimes. And 90% of the time, I get bullied by my chat, uh, as they try to make me pee. Not like in a weird way, just like in a bullying way. Was that a good intro? Was that a good t a term- Monka TOS Terms of Service intro? Uh, wish that I- wish that I- that collab went fucking places. Maybe I'll pay the room. Uh... There is an easy mode and a creative mode. And it's still not out yet. I don't know if it's still early access. Oh, okay, interesting. I thought it's not- so it's not fully out yet. Okay. I thought it was early access. It looks really fun, though. I want to try it. I see a lot of streamers play it. She also steals pee. I don't steal pee. This is slander. That was a great intro. Thank you, Major. Thank you for the appreciation. Bully Lucy for P. No, don't bully me for P. Don't don't say that word. Banned in my chat. Haru, I go work now. Itadakimasu. Itadashai. Bye bye Haru. Wait wait Haru, you have to come back later for your detention, because you said the the cursed word several times and bullied your teacher. See Haru, it's is it fun? It is fun, but it's better with friends though. I can imagine. I can imagine that Ralph would be a lot more fun with friends. I can I can see that game having a lot of griefing potential. <laughs> I would grief people. Which word? I can't even hear you. You are in detention forever. Hi. Bye bye. Bye Haru. Lucy and griefing people. <laughs> no way. I don't grief anyone. People give me grief. Am I right? Am I right, boys? Am I right, chat? <clears throat> I gotta go, but I'll leave Lurk. Oh, okay. Thank you, Major. Thank you for lurking. And thank you so much for the raid. <laughs> I'm sorry it wasn't on a, a game that's more interesting or anything. <laughs> Unless it's you playing Unrailed. I don't grief. I'm nice. I'm playing Live 2D. You can't even grief in Live 2D. How would I do that? Anyways, there's a button that says auto connect. <laughs> so click on the auto connect button. And it'll automatically link these blue points. I don't know how much of it, how much of interest this will be for people who <laughs> don't have Live 2D are interested in it. But this is Live 2D. So now that I created that extra point, I can kind of like more evenly distribute them, like this. I think that there should actually be another point here. So I'm gonna add another one. Basically, a lot of this is like touch and go based off of your personal preference. And I like where these uh, these are the suggested lines that Live 2D is giving me. So I'm gonna auto connect these. And I'm, I like how this shape is coming out. So I'm gonna leave it alone. But basically, as you can see, for any object that has a lot more fine details, you wanna make sure that you, you get the points exactly right. Cause sometimes the, the auto mesh will give you like weird lines that don't follow. So now we did that, we can click on the vertices for this one. This one's all janked up. So we're gonna edit that too. We click on our triangle tool for the fork and we go to edit again. Now let's see. What I think is that um, there aren't enough articulation points. So this one point, which has like freaking like six different lines connecting to it, like a spider web or something, I think that it would be hard to manipulate these finer details. So I'm gonna add more so that this actually has a shape of vertices that follows the actual shape of the object. So I'm going to, first I'm gonna get rid of these connection lines. Snow Starkey's fall. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, Snow Starkey. <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> you're here. I hope you enjoy um, this tutorial. <laughs> I, is that helpful? I don't know, but thank you for the follow. Uh, so we're gonna erase these two points and then we're gonna add new points here and here. So if you can see the blue lines, they're suggesting to connect all of these because they don't like you having free floating points because it'll be like weird, I guess. <laughs> so you click auto connect and ta-da. Now you have these points. Some of these shapes are kind of stupid though. Like this, like you have four triangles with this one point, which looks kind of stupid. So I will fix that in a second after I uh, adjust the shape. If you have any point where it has too many lines connected to it, basically you need to add more vertices so that you have um, more options to manipulate. So I'm gonna adjust these points first and then I will adjust the connecting lines. Here, here. And it's kind of missing a point here, so I'll add another one here. Uh, and 
now auto connects, but I actually hate some of these lines. Oops, long tool. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, let me see. What is missing here is it needs another point on the outside. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is why uh, live to do is re really tedious. It's a lot of fine work that actually makes for horrible, um, in my case, <laughs> I think it makes for myself horrible stream content, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> and as you can see, there's too many lines connecting here again. So I'm gonna adjust them. I like it better when the shape is like triangle, triangle, triangle like this. So we click auto connect. And as you can see, it's starting to look more like a normal, normal shape. Uh, I'm gonna add another point here because I think it needs another point of articulation. Uh, and then adjust again. Um, I think it needs another point here too. <laughs> Isn't this fascinating? What a fun stream. Anyways, I'll add those here, here, here. And then I click auto connect again. Um, I'll just show you one more point with the mouth because I will show you how janked up the mouth can get um, to explain why it's so important to manually adjust these. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Here, here. <clears throat> I think also this point should touch here. Anyway, anyway, that's fine. That's fine. So let us show you how the mouth looks. And the eyes are bad too, anyways, but we'll fix that later. So this is the, the closed, the bottom lip of the mouth. And you can see that it's kind of like really messed up. Everything's kind of, so we go in editing. You can see that it's it's kind of made its own random triangles. Uh, this is important because when you're manipulating the mouth later for the mouth shapes, it's gonna be really difficult if all your articulation points are really weird. So you just wanna make sure that uh, Generally speaking, you want to make sure that your mesh lines, they follow the silhouette of the shape. Because that will be, give you the highest degree of control in my personal opinion. And again, this is just how I do it. I don't know if there's like a better way or anything, but this is how I do it. So this way, when I do go to edit it later, I'll have more um, freedom. Because there will be tiny lines that uh, you can't adjust and you have to create new meshes later or new, new vertice points, I guess. That being said, you can add more points later. When you're midway through the process, you can totally just add more lines later while you're manipulating the mouth shape, but it gets more annoying. The best thing to do is to make sure that all your meshes are in the right place and really easily manipulatable. Manipulable. What's the word? Easily manipulable. Mm, that's not a word. Easily able to be manipulated uh, so that you save yourself a headache later on. This makes sense. I'm glad, I'm glad. So I just adjusted it slightly. The, the top mouth will also be kind of messed up. Lulu. I'm kind of a shy and silent student, but I'm finding this very interesting. You're doing a great tutorial, Lucy. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Lulu. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if this is boring or if it makes sense to anyone, but this is how I do it. You were right. What was it? What was right about? What was I right about? I don't know what I was right about. Uh, oh, sorry. And if you look at the, so we're at the top part now, right? So we're going to go into this menu just because it's easier. And you can see that this point is really awkward. So even if I just drag it to the left over here and drag these down a little, um, it already, it'll, it'll be a lot easier later on when I'm trying to make this. And these lines randomly squish together for some reason. I think manipulable works. Manipulable. Is that, is that real? I mean, I guess people understand. I just thought that's a real word. <laughs> um, this one, I don't like how there's no uh, line here for the corner. So I'm gonna try to create my own. And then I'm gonna auto connect. So that, that way it'll be easier to affect this corner later. Uh, I'm gonna drag these further out. So I can have this option here, this here. And this is another case where it's better to create a, another corner here. So again, you have more points of manipulation. But the, the suggested lines it gave me are garbage, so let me fix those. Okay, so y this could be better, but this is more or less how you want to use it. Okay, so yeah, 
You want to adjust your eyebrows? Your mouth? Your nose doesn't usually need much manipulation because if you're going for a super anime style, there's not much going on. And then your eyelashes uh, also need to be done manually. Uh, especially since you have so many fine points. And you can see how they have... Um, you'll need to be able to adjust these later, basically. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now for the stream because I think that it's something that you really have to figure it out on your own. Um, and again, if you follow the general advice of making sure that you have your shape of your vertices following the general shape of the object, um, then you'll, you'll be good. You'll be good. It's a touch and go for how you personally want to manipulate things. So there we go. Um, okay. Now, the next part I want to explain is, um, I know I didn't explain a lot of the things on the screen. I'm just going to finish my explanation of some of the objects on the screen. So sorry. So we create our mesh. I explained the deformers, which is this middle part. And then there is um, this section here. So, th so these ones are pretty simple. This arrow tool obviously means it's, it's a selection tool for, you know, you can, manip you can select things in individually. So that's great. This lasso tool does the same thing as the lasso in the edit menu. So if you use the lasso tool, it'll let you select a group of uh, things like this. Uh, citrus. Gotta catch some sleep, so I'm gonna go. Thanks for the stream. No problem, thank you so much for dropping by. <laughs> I hope this was helpful to you at all in any way. And if you ever have any questions about Live 2D, definitely feel free to send me a message on Twitter or anything. Um, I, I can answer, I, I'm, I'm super down to answer questions if you have any problems or stuff later on. Uh, I don't know if we'll do a second stream of this live GD tutorial. We'll see how far we get today. But yeah, thank you so much for coming and thank you for the follow. <laughs> it's nice meeting you. Have a good night. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> uh, let's continue. Uh, where was I? Sorry. So the lasso tool lets you select a selection of points. And this tool, what is this? brush selection to adjust the level of effect. I'll be honest, I have no idea what this tool does, but I've never touched it or seen anyone else mention it, so I'm gonna ignore it. <laughs> Oops, sorry, let me turn off flux. Okay. Uh, so next we have this series of tools on the right. This series of tools is uh, mostly important. Brush selection is very useful. What does it do? I don't know what it does. Let's see what it does. What does it do? Oh, what is that? What did that do? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. So basically, if it's using, so it, it is also, basically this, is, this entire three set is a selection tool set. So so the, the pointer, you can point and click on individual points. This one lets you to select a group. And the brush tool allows you to select whatever vertices you brush it over. So now if I go to pointer, for example, I can drag the ear or whatever. So just make sure that when you're using the, the brush tool is to select the area and the the, uh, the cursor is to actually move it or manipulate it. Okay. Thank you for explaining, Freya. And if you ever want to, if you ever click something you don't want to, you can just click outside of your model and it will deselect it. Okay. So I was talking about this last set of three tools. So these tools are mostly, for me personally, very useful when you are editing the eye shape um, for blinks and also very important for when you're doing the mouth shape for, for opening, closing, and creating mouth forms. So uh, you can also use this for your face for when you're turning, but I personally don't like to. I use it for the eyes and the mouth. So the deform path edit is the first tool, the line and the circle through it. Using this tool, you can create a line over any object and manipulate that line. So that's why in cases with the eye eyelash. I'm Dip for now, Lucy. Have a good rest of your stream. Okay, thank you, Andreas, for coming by. And thank you for... I won't thank you for the bullying, but thank you for keeping me company. <laughs> and a final hydrate, a, a, a parting hydrate. Thanks for that, Andreas. When I pee later, I'll remember that you, you made me pee a lot.
my address. Okay. <laughs> uh, where was I? Right. So like I was saying, uh, the deformed path. Oh, hi, As Asayuki. Hi, Asayuki. Hi. Thanks so much for dropping by. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good night or day, wherever you are. Uh, we're doing a live 2D tutorial today. So if you have this program or, in, or any interest in this program, um, I hope that you can learn something today. We, we kind of just started getting toward uh, using the actual program itself. Uh, so deform path edit. So like I said, it creates a path that you can manipulate, uh, which is why it's helpful for long, fine objects like this. So let me show you how it works. So you create Oh, ha ha ha. Let me see. Or maybe I won't show you. Maybe I'll just tease. Okay, here we go. So you have to click an object first, because otherwise it doesn't know where where to put the path. You can you can think of objects or any deformers as a layer tool, as a layer in like Photoshop. Hi, good day. Good. Ah, it's day here. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Well, I hope you're having a good day so far. So yeah, you have to click on an object when you're using this tool to assign it to like a quote unquote layer. So yeah, you it isn't a pen in the traditional sense where you just draw a claw across. It's a pen in the sense that you, you click on the points and it'll create a path. So if, if I start here, I go here, go here, 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 here. And it'll create this path. Um. A point of interest, I try to make sure that the points that I do assign to the object, it, it's between the vertices of the mesh because it'll be tricky later on when you're trying to manipulate the object if you keep trying to click on this point and it keeps getting you this one because then you have to zoom in really close. It, otherwise, you can't click on it. So now that I've created my path, I can go to my cursor tool and manipulate it here. See? Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. I can stretch it out, I can flip it around, I can squish it in to make it smaller. And all the other, uh, the rest of the path will affect the object because it's all connected like this. And the sick thing too is after you finish, after you finish manipulating your object, if you decide you're like, okay, I'm done with the path tool, you can just delete the path tool after that. And it's gone. And now I have a beautiful eye this is how anime characters' eyes are. Perfect. Just kidding. Okay. And if we control Z, the path will come back. Control Z, we undo again. We undo what we did. Perfection. Thank you, Frey. I'm glad you think so. Press control Z again, and it will, you know, just keep going back. It has a very long memory for all the mistakes you've made. Such beauty. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to control Z this entire path because I didn't want it. Um, edit glue. I don't know what glue is. I never use glue. Uh, and then there's art path tools. Edit art path. What's art path? Let's see. Only SDK N8 Cubism 4.0 is compatible with art path. Do you want to switch the target to SDK N8 Cubism 4.0? Our path is function only for video export use. It is possible to export to the SDK, but the art... Okay, I don't want this. Don't know what it is, but apparently it's for video editing, so we don't need it. It feels weird hearing Zed in a not British accent. Do you want me to do a British accent for the rest of this tutorial? I think everyone will enjoy it if I do a British accent. It'll be jolly good. Yes, all right then. This seems so simple. Meanwhile, I'm trying to manipulate Luna's extremely detailed eyebrows. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I keep my, sorry. Yeah, I keep my model pretty simple cause um, I don't really need to make it really complicated, but I know that the more complicated a model is, the better looking it will be and more people will like it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Please don't look at me. 
<laughs> Don't look at me. Okay. <clears throat> nope. We didn't. That didn't happen. Okay. All right. So I've explained all the tools. Oh. <laughs> Don't make that face. <laughs> Don't make that face. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I forgot one more thing. At the top left, you see here it says edit level, right? So this basically just means the degree to which you want to be, the degree to which you want to be able to edit things. So two is the standard. So what I mean by that is two is normal. Detail, edit, a detail, deform path, edit, warp, deform, or control points. So for one, edit level one, that means that you want to be very refined. It just means that the degree of control you have over it is very, is much more minute. Two is the standard, and three means that you're, you're editing in very broad strokes. Rough edit form path, edit wrapped form of frame. I don't know actually how it affects things. I know that's what it does, but I always keep it on to the standard, so I don't know specifically what it does. If you want to research and find out and experiment on your own, let me know. For sure, let me know what the changing of it does actually. Yeah, that's what the Japanese tutorial said. Yeah. Basically, but I, I don't know, my, my, <laughs> I have very basic use of live 2D, so I just don't adjust, change it from the standard for a lot of these things. <clears throat> uh, so that's what everything does here. There's also here, which basically just changes the mode that you view live 2D in. Because like I said, live 2D is uh, at its core an animation program. So you can switch it to, right now we're model view, we can switch it to animation view. Which means that, so here obviously you would create actual like frames and create animation for it. So live, so 2D animations, like if you have Arc Knights or again Odin Sphere and you want to make some animations. And you can switch to form animation, which I'm assuming is similar, but using the different forms to create the animations instead. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, you can do the animations in the program. I haven't touched it at all, but I've seen some people do some cool stuff. Um, and then, but we're going to switch back to model mode. For our purposes um when you're in default when you're in oops free array free array free array <clears throat> uh let's see i want to explain about here the inspector yes yeah, emoji anime and live oh that's cool that's so cool wow it's my proudest achievement. That's so cool! Freya knows how to use animation in Life 2D. That's really cool. Yeah, I haven't touched that at all. <laughs> Maybe you can teach me sometime. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so here in the inspector tool, there's a lot of things here. Um, obviously it'll only come up when you click on an object. So let's click on an object here. You just have parameters at certain timestamps. It's super easy. Oh, interesting, interesting. Is that how you made your kitty too? I think Odin was it? I might be mistaken. Uh, so let's click on eyelash R, for example. So when I click on the object, oh, and there's two ways to click objects. You can either click the object manually here, or you can click on the object in your parts menu here. So we're gonna click on eyelash R. Yes, Odin moves that way, nice. So as you can see, when I click on the object, a bunch of things come up in the inspector, right? So you have the name. You can manually, uh, manually change the name of this object here. Or, and you have the ID. So this is the ID for the specific object. When you want to create, um... in Photoshop, you have clipping layers, right? A clipping layer is, a, or masks. Clipping layers or masks are basically when you assign specific parts so that they can only appear in uh, certain objects or in certain areas. So when you, so you can do the same thing in Live 2D. That's actually how the eyeballs work. So if you click on my actual model here, let's go to the eyes for a second. Um, okay, so if you click on the actual eyes here and you click on the iris, iris are it, if you put, it has here where it says clipping ID. So the clipping ID is for the white, the white eyeball on the right. So now when I move this object, okay. Now when I create this, move this object, it can only appear in the whites of the right eyeball because of the clipping ID. 
There's other things you can do with um, object IDs as well, but uh, for our purposes, this is basically what you're going to be doing with it. Okay. Uh, the next part is this. So there's a drop down menu under ID called part. So basically just this just means what folder it's assigned to. In my actual model, so we're gonna, this is the next step actually, we're going to assign parts to folders because it's much more organized. Uh, in this case, so if you see I, iris r, the part that it's assigned to is eyes, which is the eyes folder. Um, the way that I organize my objects, the folders and everything, is actually stolen straight one for one from Kira Omori's organization method. I think her organization method is very uh, clean. It's very clean so that everything, when I just click it, like, you know, one drop, you can clean everything away and put it away. So it's like a very clean view. So the first thing that we're going to do after auto meshing and adjusting the minute details is we're going to uh, clean up everything and put it in folders. Let's see. Hira is a backbone of the English live 2D community. It's true. I learned everything from her and deep lizard okay so we're gonna organize them in folders i'll show you how to do that have you seen her new mouth tutorial i haven't seen her new mouth tutorial yet i'm gonna try that soon oh, okay cool cool i need to check it out yeah i saw she came out with a new video but i haven't seen it yet okay so in this case we look at our parts menu here again and there are two buttons on the bottom there's a uh, a folder button, obviously, or a garbage can button. The garbage can will send your objects or folders to the shadow zone. We don't click that. We cl do click folder, which makes new part. They call folders in this part. So we're gonna create a new part. It will bring up this menu. So we're gonna create a horns folder. So horns. And the part ID, I don't know, this doesn't matter. I don't, it's not important horns so now we're going to we're going to click on this and the shortcut for control clicking stuff also works here so control and click multiple objects to select multiple objects um, and drag them you can drag them physically into the folder it's advanced mouth movement she provides a detailed sheet nice nice okay so that is how you create a folder and how you separate them is up to you um, again, I steal shamelessly from Hiro Omori's method. So you can see that I've created like, I don't know, 20 folders based off of what I think I'll need them for. So bangs I put into their whole own folder because they're very complicated. Um, you can see it's, it's all, <laughs> and it's only the front bangs, the side bang, the side birds or side bangs get their own folder. Uh, so we're going to call this bangs. Drag them in again, and you're just going to keep doing that. Okay, eyebrows. I don't know for that. Ugh. Oh, God. This is content. Did I put ears in their own folder? I did. I did put ears in their own folder. Mm. So anyways, you just did that for a bit. <laughs> okay. Um, and let me explain, sorry. Let me explain this part. I didn't finish explaining this. So there's, after the part, which is the folder again, we have the deformer. So I explained it earlier, there are two kinds of deformers, warp or rotators. Here you can assign it to a specific deformer. So for example, so actually this will be good practice. Let me create a deformer. Most of my objects have a deformer because I'd like to work within deformers. So let's do this for uh, horns. Uh, in my case, I'm going to create a deformer for both of them because I don't think that they need individual movement or individual physics. 
and they'll probably be moving together. So I can create a mesh, or sorry, a deformer by clicking on this, create warp deformer. We're gonna use warp deformer because we don't need them to rotate. Click warp deformer and we'll bring up this menu, create warp deformer. So destination part, it will automatically detect what folder you're in, but you can also manually choose. We're in horns, that's right. So now I can change the name of the uh, deformer. So I'll change it to, you know, horns deformer. Now here's a section that says add. So here you can choose basically what the deformer is, who the deformer is for. So there's something called a parent-child relationship in Live2D. So everything, so you can assign things to be a child or a parent. So if it's a child will always need a parent. So the child object will be nestled or how do I put this, will be contained within the parent container. So anything that happens to the parent in some ways will happen to the child. You can think of them as clipping masks again. So um, in this case, uh, so there, that's why you have the options as parent of selected object, as child of selected object, which is uh, grayed out because we have no, we have no object to, to, we have no object to parent it. We haven't clicked an object that it can parent or it can be childed of. And then we have set parent manually. Sorry. <laughs> so usually you want to set parent manually. Um, and you can choose from here. Root deformer means that um, it has no parent. It means that you will manually adjust the, the, the parent yourself. Root deformer is, root deformer is basically free, free fall, free fall. It's just a root deformer. It's just a deformer that you will adjust. It doesn't belong to any, any specific object yet. It's not assigned. Here on the bottom, it says name of Bezier divisions and name of conversion divisions. Um, if you saw earlier, when I clicked on one of these deformers, let's click on the actual horns deformer. You can see that it is split up like a grid, right? So it's split up in a grid with a lot of different points. So you can adjust the number of boxes and grids and green lines or green anchors or whatever you can assign to the deformer. So if you're working with a very detailed object, for example, you might want to, you might want to have more boxes. You might want to have more green line things. Or you, if you're working with a very large object, you might want less. In my case, I personally just leave it on the default because usually um, it's good enough for me. But I know other people have their own personal preferences about uh, adjusting things. And it, like most things in Live 2D, it's a, it's a drag. It, you can drag it. I don't know if you can manually type this one. You can, okay, so you can manually type it. But yeah, you can drag it or manually type it. I leave it on the default of two by two, five by five or whatever. Um, and then you have your three object, three options here. Create, close, or continuous creation. Don't know what con continuous creation is, but probably don't need it. <laughs> I'm just gonna click on create. So when you create a root deformer and you haven't assigned it to any object, it'll turn out really big like this. One mistake that a lot of people make is that when they create their deformer or root deformer, they'll accidentally make it either too large for the work area. So this white area is obviously your work space. Uh, and then when they try to do things with that deformer, nothing happens. So with our warp deformer, right now it's, it's, it's not assigned to anything. Even if we do anything with it, nothing will change in the model itself. There are no objects. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust it to the size of the objects that we want to put inside. You basically want it to be slightly bigger than your objects, but not too big. Because if it's too big, it might start to, um, it might be hard to select it or adjust it because it might be in like the size or in the area of effect of like other containers. So you want it to be slightly bigger so that you are able to affect every object inside it um, that you want but not too big. So this looks pretty good. The horns are within the shape of the deformer. So now I'm going to actually assign the horns to the object, or sorry, to the deformer. So we click on these, the horns, and as you can see, right now the deformer is root, so it has no deformer. So we can click on this and put it into the warp deformer of horns. 
Click on that. And the same thing with this. You can even see on the bottom left here, which shows all your deformers, you can see now that the warp deformer of horns and the devil horn R and L have a relationship. There's a line between them. They're inside of this deformer. So if I minimize it, the deform the horns will be minimized too in this menu. Uh, so now we've created our first warp deformer. So now, if I uh, move this deformer, the horns will move as well because they belong to this. Okay. So what you do now is create, <laughs> I create all of my deformers and all of my folders. Um, let's see, gonna create real quick. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I'm just gonna be creating this, which is really fun. I really like organizing. An organizing stream gives really good content. Go eyes. Interestingly, I actually separate the eyeballs from the eyes. Because that's how she does it. Organizing is hard. Yeah, it is. It's really annoying. <laughs> but you'll thank yourself for it later. Because then you'll be so much easier to see. Let's see. Eyeballs. So now you're going to drag the eyeballs in here. Nose gets its own nose. Why? I don't know. It does. It just does. Uh, we're going to create a mouth folder. Uh, which puts everything in the mouth got everything there and we'll create a face folder why not just, where did neck go where does neck go neck whoops not that okay so neck just has neck which is good neck is just neck there's no way i'm going to organize my files it's way too much not including my music <laughs> You have to organize a penny. You'll regret your you'll regret it later. You'll be like, I could have I could have had it all. I could have been organized. I could have been able to find my files immediately. What? Hat? You can have hat fold wait, where did I put hat? Did I put hat and hat folder? Did I really do that to myself? I did put hat and hat folder. <laughs> okay, hat folder it is. I'm a VTuber and I regret it. <laughs> oh, Venny, I regret it too. This is really good, by the way, Lucy. Kira's tutorials are great, but she goes so fast. This will make for a nice, slow intro to Live 2D. Oh, thank you so much, Freya. Yeah, some like I love Kira, just like fundamentally. <laughs> but I, I love her tutorials. But sometimes when I was watching them, I didn't know what she was talking about because she she moves so quickly and she knows the program already. So I figure this is this is helpful for like basic basic basics. It I agree. Thank you. Like I think that um if you have any passing familiarity with Photoshop or if any art program, it helps a lot. But I think that for a lot of people, maybe they maybe they don't mess around in Photoshop as much or maybe it's it's hard to understand the relationships. Um, just because they're not familiar, so. My brain bad and it's hard for me to concentrate, so I like your pace. And also that you answer questions well. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That's so sweet. Aw, oh, I'm glad that it's easy to understand. I'm trying to slow down my speaking so it's not too confusing. Um, but, you know, it can be hard, hard. So all of, oh wait, I forgot, where did I put this? Where did I put hairpins? The heck? Did I just give it its own folder? Where did I, oh, did I put it with twin tails? Oh, I did put it with twin tails, okay. Anyway, now all of our uh, objects are in folders. We'll have to create deformers too, but before that, I want to explain something here too. Uh, so not only do we create folders for our for all our parts here, but we also create folders for all of our parameters. It's just easier to for quick ref reference. 
Uh, and that's what Kira does. And I copy everything she does. So uh, it has the same things here. So if you look at the tools here, sorry, let me explain the parameter submenu entirely. So here at the bottom, we have our parameter submenu, which is one of the most important menus in Live 2D. So let me explain what the buttons do. This button expands all of your parameters when they're in a folder. Uh, obviously, when I click it, nothing's going to happen because nothing's in a folder yet. Next, we have add two keyforms, which is this uh, these two green dots with a line between it. So a keyform, if you think of it like, so since this program was originally for animation, a keyform would be like a keyframe, right? But for our purposes, for this model, you can think of them as um, limitations. So you're telling, you're telling each uh, parameter how far it can go one way or the other, essentially. Where, where it stops and where it ends so that my eyeballs don't go outside of my head. A key form is one of those uh, limitations or one of those like forms that the model will animate between. So let me show an example here with the, uh, let's go with the eyes. Actually, let's not, yeah, let's go with the eyes. So here in eyeball XY, if we're looking, this is my finished model. You can see that, oh, let me click on the actual eyes so you can see the highlight. Um, give me a second. Okay, so if you click on, if you see on this layer, this deformer, which is where I did it, we'll explain that later. In this deformer, we can see that when I see these parameters, there's green dots on all these corners, right? So the reason why this looks like this and it doesn't look like the lines like earlier is because I've linked these two parameters. So let me just unlink them. You can link parameters. You see how each parameter has this little uh, nub, this little circly nub beside it? If you click on that parameter, it will link them. So let me unlink them. And you can see that they have each separate parameters. So in this case, this parameter here this uh, line on the, or this dot on the left side, if I click on it, this is the limitation of what I set for the eyeball being able to move this way. And then if I click on this one, well, right click, by the way, uh, you can left click, yeah, you can left click too, but it's, I'll explain in a second. <laughs> um, this is the parameter for how far the eye can move this way. Um, the reason why there are three key forms here and not two key forms is because we want to have a neutral state where the eye is in the middle, right? But if, but now you see if I, so the highlighted green dot is where you are currently. It's highlighted in red. So if I click that actually and drag it, you can see that the program animates between the points we've set. So X axis is left to right and the Y axis, which also has a highlighted point here is up and down. I'm going to tell you one shortcut that's really uh, helpful. Uh, if you right click, I guess it's just right click now. It used to be alt right click. But if you right click on any of these points, it will it will select that that extreme point. Because sometimes if you left click, so I'm going to left click now, it's off by a little bit. It's off by from the extreme, from the actual uh, key form that you've made. If you right click though, it will bring you to the actual key form itself that you've set. So we're going to put this to the neutral state. Um, I'm going to connect these two again because these two points are connected and it's just easier to see the animation points between. So now these are a full, a full grid. So if I click on this keyform, for example, you can see that it, it, it automatically rendered, not automatically, you have to set it, but anyways, it rendered this corner. So if I take, if I click on this, again, the red highlight and drag it anywhere in this grid, you can see how it moves. So that, that is what a key form is. Uh, let's see. Now this one, this button with the three dots, it says add three key forms. So in this case, it'll automatically create three key forms like that, see? And this one creates two, easy peasy. Now I said earlier not to ever delete a parameter or to de delete uh, deformers because um, it might accidentally delete your actual object. Um, instead of, so say you do a key form and you mess it up real bad. 
say for this one, for this, I don't know, this, wait. <laughs> I accidentally selected a, bunch, selected a bunch of things. Say for this devil horn on this one. Or I guess I'm going to work with the deformer because that's how I actually work. Say for angle X, I make two keyforms. And then for this this one, I accident I accidentally set it in a weird way. By the way, the way that you set keyforms is literally just click, clicking on that keyform with your right click and then moving it there. So that means that's set. So now if I go between these two, those key forms are set. So say I messed up real bad. I don't want the horns, I don't want the horns to fly up there when I don't know her head moves, I guess. <laughs> uh, then you would want to click on this button here, the third button, which is delete all key forms. But that's so strange, why not? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think that's it's a choice look to have my horns fly up, but not for me, I guess. Um, so you can delete key, key forms that way that you messed up. But before you do that, make sure that you are selected on the key form that you want to keep or the default one. Because if I click on this one, right? Say it's the messed up one and I click uh, delete all key forms. It will now assume that the default state of these horns is all the way up here. Even though that's illogical and nobody would want them up there, but it will. So I'm going to control Z and I'm going to right click on this key form because that's where a default was. And then I will click on delete all key forms. And now that we can just pretend it's a neutral state. If I quick, if I slide between here, nothing happens. There's no key forms. Um, this button here, edit key forms manually. So I click on this. Okay, wait, <laughs> hold on a second. So I click on this. You need to select an object. Uh, edit key forms manually. It will bring up this menu. This is, uh, you can see that it kind of works like a spectrum, right? So with minus 30 being the extreme on this end and 30 being over here. So this line is actually the same as this line over here. It's just that now you can manually create them. So if I want more than three key forms, if I want to just manually do that, then I can click here, left click, and I can click here, right click, I click, click, click in the middle. And you can see every time I click, it brings up a new key uh, form over here. I can also manually, I can also do that here by clicking on the plus or minus. Uh, you also need this button toggle, uh, clicked, but it's clicked by default, which is snapped to the roundest number. So it will click on one of these points instead of like a random, like minus 23.2 or something. If I click OK now, it creates key points, sorry, key forms at, that th at those three points that I specified. And then there's this option. Oops, sorry. Uh, let me just one second. Show only the parameters active for selected objects. So if I want to see real quick how many parameters uh, affect this specif specific object, I can click on this. Because say say I created key forms for this, and I created key form. Oops, I create key form. Okay, okay, all right. And I create key forms here, and I create key forms here. If I click on this now, show only the parameters active for selected objects, it will minimize all the other parameters that don't affect this object. And it will bring up the ones where things actually happen. So I'm just gonna do that and do that. And that's what all these buttons do. There's one final, uh, there's also this drop down menu here. Show palette menu. So this will bring up a lot of different uh, options. So let me show you here. So this is my finished model. She's cute. Uh, say that I, <laughs> there's a testing option to see that'll give you random poses here. This play button. I'm clevering it a little bit with my wings. Let me see. But you can kind of see it. There's a play button at the bottom right. If you click that, it'll t give random poses to your model that will show you, uh, you know, to, to test, to see if it's working. So if I click on it, so just do random random poses, which I, if I click on, it's now a stop button. I click it, it'll stop. Now this beautiful face she's making, it's really beautiful, but it's not uh, helpful for my um, work. Perfect, right? Absolutely perfect. So I can click here in the palette menu. I'm just gonna sneeze. I wish I was gonna sneeze earlier, didn't happen. Uh, if I click on this palette menu, it'll go reset and I click reset to default values. Bam, bing, bang, boom, I can work again. 
She finished sneezing. Uh, so let's look at the other options. Block default deformer. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. If I click on this, then it'll lock this default deformer and I can't do anything with it. No matter how much I drag it, no matter how much I click on these corners, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Whoops, that might've been happened. Whoops, don't worry about that. <laughs> what did I do? Whoops. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna click on this again and we're gonna unlock it. Now we can uh, look at the other options. Parameter settings, we click on that. And I'll bring up all these parameter settings for all of the parameters. Right now, nothing's really, so you can see, um, you can set different minimum and maximums for different parameters. Uh, some of them are default different. Um, and then on the right, it'll tell you the description about what each of these parameters actually does. So if you wanna actually study this, this is my first time seeing this menu. <laughs> but if you want to study this menu to see what each one actually does, that seems like a good idea. Okay. Um, let's see. There's group settings. We don't have any groups, parameter groups, uh, but which we will create, which could, we could create. Um, but if there were, you could fix them here. Uh, settings for eye blinking and lip sync. Don't know, nothing's set right now, so nothing. Synth Synthesize corners is a tool that, so I showed you earlier with the eyes, right? Here, right? So even though I set, let's see. So even though they weren't linked, right? So I set these three points and these three points, and I connect them. But there are corners that I didn't set. If I want the if I want the program to automatically calculate what the corners would be for these objects, like if the object set at y and object set at uh, x were to move in that corner, then the program itself can calculate it for me. This is good and bad because sometimes it will calculate it well, and sometimes the corners will be super wonky. But I don't think it's a bad point to start with. So when you click on uh, two parameters that you've set, blah blah blah, it's just and we connect them we can click on that parameter click on this palette and click synthesize corners which will bring up the synthesize menu uh which you can also manually select so you can select parameter one parameter two whatever target selected objects or you can synthesize everything in that corner or whatever but we'll just do selected object not convert locked objects not convert whatever um, and we click OK. And now the corners will be automatically cal calculated for us by the program. I'm just gonna control Z because we didn't make anything real. Okay. Next we have um, reflect, reflect motion is very important. So we're gonna experiment, we're gonna show you again with the warp deformer for the horns. So um, we're gonna create uh, three points. So the neutral point will be this one. But say I want the horns to move left to right. So if the head turns, I want the horns to move left to right, but I want it to be exactly symmetrical. I don't want to manually set it. So we'll right click on this point again. So now we've selected this extreme uh, key form and we're going to adjust this. So here is a hot tip for adjusting. I learned from Brian Soy's tutorial. Shift, hold, sh so click the object, hold shift, and now press the directional buttons. So if I want to move this to the left, but I want to do it incrementally and measure it, I hold shift and click left. So one tap moves it incrementally like that. So now for sure I'll know one tap, two taps, three, four, five. So now if I want to make sure the right side is symmetrical, I can click on that extreme and also do, you know, five taps. Now that works for specific, certain objects work that way. But if you can also do this, which is reflect motion. So I've made this move, let's, let's move it more because that won't show you anything. So now when her head turns to the left, the horns will move this much, right? Or to the right, whatever. It will move that much, right? Now if I right click on this extreme corner, nothing will happen because I didn't set it. But if I click on this again, and I click on this palette menu and click reflect motion, it will bring up this menu, uh, which has blah, blah, blah. Basic settings, this is the only thing that really matters. Reflect horizontally or reflect vertically. 
So whatever I click on, the opposite end will reflect this movement either upwards or sideways. So reflect horizontally because usually you're dealing with a uh, horizontal movement. So it's, that's fine and I'll click OK. Now this entire parameter is highlighted yellow and the right uh, key form, which we want to reflect, is now highlighted red, but like a deeper red. So now if I drag this this way, it's a symmetrical motion. This is very important from your, for when you're doing um, hair mostly, hair movements. I'm sure you could do this to other things too, and it would work similarly, as long as there's not really a vertical movement. So that's what reflect motion does. And we can control Z and then nothing happened. Multiple keys editing. I've never used it, but I think you can kind of guess what that is, multiple keys editing. You can select multiple key forms and adjust them. Um, bulk reflect. So this is probably the same thing. So if I want her entire body, if there are some objects, this is unlikely to happen because you, I mean, it could happen, but usually you're adjusting things manually. Uh, say there's an entire right side of her body, which I want to be reflected exactly on the left. Um, then I could, which I, I guess maybe, I don't know. It's easier to do it individually to be sure that there's no mistakes but if you were a pro at this you could select everything and reflect it on the right uh, the opposite side so we're just gonna undo that so we don't need that extended interpolation what is this to perform extended interpolation you need three or more key forms well don't know what that is and i've never used it so we're gonna close it okay so that is what everything is in the key form Sorry, parameter submenu. Can I drink? Okay, cool. Uh, now the original goal of why we're here, <laughs> we're going to create, uh, we're going to create folders. But just as a quick point of interest, down here there are three buttons again: folder button, garbage can button, shadow realm button, and we have new parameter button. So when you do get around to creating a new parameter, um, you're gonna click this button. So let me just show you how it works. Click on new parameter and it'll bring up this menu. So you can make a new name for it. So say I have a bell, right? And I need the bell to, I don't have a bell, but pretend there's a bell and I need to animate it, give it physics left or right. So I'll name it bell. And then I had to give it a parameter ID, a unique ID so that um, you know it has a unique ID compared to other objects. So I can write param bell. There are specific ID naming rules. You can click here to find out. Um, but generally speaking, unless you have like wild naming, it's fine. And then here you select the range. Um, the only times I've created new parameters, it wouldn't accept anything that was minus 30 or plus 30. So I usually set it to minus one or plus one. I don't know if this is due or just like positive one. I don't know if this is due to limitations in the program or limitations of my settings for the file, but it doesn't read anything well in minus 30 or plus 30 in the physics menu. That was my dog again. He says hello. So this is generally how you go. Oh. This is generally how you're going to create a new parameter. Make sure that you <laughs> exclamation mark bark. I should set that as a command. Um, yeah, make sure that when you do a new parameter, you set your ranges between minus one and plus one because it will not it will not read these parameters if it is beyond that for some reason. Maybe it's because of my head preset, pet doggo. <laughs> I will pet him later. I'll give him lots of pets for you guys. Uh, and then click OK. And now you can see I have a new bell parameter here. We don't need this parameter, however, so I'm going to send it to the shadow realm. Goodbye. Okay. Now we're going to create folders. So again, shamelessly ripped off of Kira Omori. These are the folders. You're going to have head, eyes, eyebrows, mouth, cheek, body, and hair. So the head parameters will be X, Y, and Z. So you click on the create new folder. You double click it to rename it. So head. And you click enter. So I'm going to drag all of this in here because these are all your head parameters. And generally speaking, the rest of your body parts will also have key forms in the head parameter. And now we're gonna create eyes. Bark, 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 bark. 
Oh, hold on a second. Um, I also took the opportunity to pee. <laughs> I don't know why I have to pee so much today. What a mystery, right? He has a lot to say. It's like Freya's cat in dog form. <laughs> Does Freya's cat talk a lot? I never I never heard, heard their cat during the streams, but I am usually like doing something while I'm watching. Redeem hydrate. Thank you. I'm not peeing enough today. I need to pee more. You're right. Freya's cat is constantly yelling in the background. <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna quickly create these folders real quick. Lucy P. No. <laughs> no Lucy P. <laughs> Can't believe this. On my own stream. Okay. But I'm gonna create, so I'm gonna create these folders. But I think we might need to call this dream today because um, it's dinner time for me. <laughs> But I want to know whether people mm, would would people be interested in a second stream continuing? I think that between this stream and if I were to do another live 2D stream, I would create all the folders and all the deformers. So you guys so you guys don't have to watch me and you guys wouldn't have to manually watch me create deformers and uh, folders. Cause that seems uh, maybe like it ain't it ain't it ain't contact, is it? It ain't content, is it? In it, in it, it ain't content, in it. Um, <laughs> so if you'd be interested in me doing another stream to explain the rest, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'd be interested. Okay, good to know. Thank you. I'm in. Cool. Use some sort of street urchin. <laughs> I'm from London. London. <laughs> I think it might be useful if you read from start to beginning a really simple art. Okay. Okay, that could be helpful. My old model is pretty simple. Or I could do a real, do you mean, how simple do you mean? Do you mean like a simple, like like an, like an orange? Do you want me to make an annoying orange VTuber? I would love to watch that because it would apply the actual parameter things you bring up, etc. That's true, that's true. Let's see, body. Hmm. Would it be, I guess it could be like something you could do head at X, Y, Z, eyes, breathing, but not have a lot of complex accessories. True, 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 true. Every YouTuber. <laughs> something you could do head X, Y, Z, eyes, breathing, but not have a lot of complex accessories. Uh, I could do that. I could try to um, find a really simple model next time so I could do a really quick demo. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the chair of that fun. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And I'm, I'm uh, thank you guys for sticking around. I didn't realize there's there <laughs> so many people lurking. I thought it was just me <laughs> crying into the void. Okay, bits, bits, bits. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great tuber. Okay, um, then I think I will do a second stream of this, where I I can bring up a really simple model to explain how to rig, uh, really simply, I guess. From start to finish. It wouldn't it would be very simple. So it wouldn't have a lot of complex accessories. Might not have eyebrows. The robot man. No, not you. <laughs> uh, so I'll do two things for next stream. I'll I'll bring a very simple model so I can rig it really quickly to show you. Oh thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lulu. <laughs> thank you so much for the cheers. <laughs> thank you for educating us. Thank you guys for listening. 
<laughs> if you guys aren't here, it just may be me screaming into the void and still peeing. So, you know how, you know how it'd be. <laughs> okay, so yeah, next time I will bring a very simple model. So I will rig, so we can rig that really quick in like an hour, maybe two hours. And then we will continue uh, with this. Because I know that, so, because I think that a lot of people here do want to see um, how you actually rig a human v tuber model <laughs> i learned a lot it really helped it makes the program less intimidating oh thank you oh thank you guys okay i hope that was helpful and you make it look very straightforward it, it is once you like break it down and you practice a little it's just that i feel like um so much of the information is sparse is like out there it's, it's very like uh spread out so it's hard to tell um how, how to centralize all of it I also have notes, like text notes, that I can post on my Twitter later. I can post on my Twitter later. It's very, it's literally just key, po key points, key forms even. <laughs> but it, it is, it can be a sort of workflow once you kind of figure out how the program works. But, but I might post that after the next live 2D session because not a lot of it will make sense at this point. But yeah, uh, I will post another live 2D tutorial, uh, part two of this. So thank you everyone for coming, and um, I hope you have a good night. <laughs> but let us see if we can find someone to raid. If you guys could just hang out for, you're welcome. Uh, if you guys could hang out for maybe a few minutes, and we'll find someone. I, I promise I'll find you someone interesting to raid, and we'll watch them for a bit. And if you like their content, etc. But you know, stick around and see if it's someone interesting. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Oh wow, you can see everything. <laughs> Let me turn that off real quick because I don't want you to see my dirty, dirty tabs. Let's go back to classroom time. Let's destroy someone. Okay. Let's see who is streaming. Let's see. Do, do, do. Mm. Where did you get your teaching certificate? <laughs> I got it from the Hel the school, the Hellion School for teaching uh, lower, lower subjects. Let's see. I think we will. Do you guys want to see? Um, yeah, we're gonna stream. We're gonna raid Aqua. <laughs> She's playing an actual, or sorry, they're playing an actual game, so <laughs> it might be a bit more interesting to watch. Uh, than what we've been doing. But I swear they're really fun and cheerful. And I think it'd be, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it might be interesting to watch, playing an actual game. Thank you for imparting knowledge upon us, lowly beings in Sama. You're welcome. But thank you guys for sticking around. And please just stick around to check out their stream and see if you like their stuff. Thank you guys, and I hope you have a good night. I'll see you next time. I don't have a catchphrase. Um, Nipa, <laughs> Nya Nya, Nipa. <laughs> Have you guys come to the next stream too? <laughs> Kon Kambawa. <laughs> That's Alice's phrase. Good night, doll. Bye bye.